He was sitting with an anti-Semite. He was known to be very smart. He, he was sitting, I guess, some kind of meeting or whatever it was with the anti-Semite next to him. He goes, yeah, you know, in Japan, they don't have, uh, they have neither pigs nor Jews. That was a very, you know, insulting remark. So without missing a beat, he goes, uh, we should both go there. That, that way they'll have a sample of both. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Pray Hard, Play Hard YouTube channel and podcast. That's right. Um, uh, please subscribe, smash that like button. It's and free. Uh, that's right. Uh, hopefully uh, you find this uh, uh, informative and entertaining. And uh, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. So first of all, I just want to give a shout out to this man over here, Ilya, because... <laughs> the seltzer is back. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> the seltzer is back. Maybe we'll do like a thing like... Find the seltzer, uh -huh. just like leave it in the shot, like somewhere <laughs> hidden and be like, find the seltzer. Can you see it there? Yeah, yeah it's okay. right here. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was looking for this, it's a, it's a earbud, you know, a wireless earphone. And I'm looking for this thing. And yesterday I called him to do the show. He wasn't feeling well. And he's like, he's like, did you lose this? I'm like, yeah, I did. So I say, thank you. And he's like, no, no, man. Thank you for letting me part, be, be part of the mitzvah. So, just want to say this guy is he's the, he's the real deal. Thank you, but you give yeah. me way too much credit. You had to mention this. Uh. <laughs> and, thank and, you, thank you. and if you're wondering why I'm in my, um, my Shabbos clothes, today is a very special day. Today is Yud Shvat, the day, it's the yard site of the Friedrich Rebbe, mm -hmm. the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the day when the Lubavitcher Rebbe became Rebbe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, very significant, significant day. Yes, yes. It, uh, and actually, out of all, out of all weeks, I uh, forgot to prepare something from the Rebbe, so I'm going to have to add it onto the video afterwards, probably from the studio. Anyway, so in honor of the di of the day, we're going to do a, we're going to do a little somersault. <laughs> <laughs> go, make do the countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And I do the, do the dance. Oh, change his sleeve. I don't know. What the <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just a yeah, yeah, Ah, okay. So, first of all, uh, something we both realize is that we sometimes say things, and then we remember that, or we find out later that it wasn't 100% accurate, or if we find out more information. So, number one, last. Week, I think it was, we spoke about the fact that the B'nai Yisrael uh, by Marcus Bacharf at the plague of the firstborn, they, uh, one, of, one of the things that uh, differentiated them from the Egyptians was that they had the, uh, the two types of blood, but we only mentioned the, we mentioned the blood of the Karban Pesach. Mm -hmm. They also had the blood of the Bris Mila. Mm -hmm. Right, um, I think I think in the show last week it sounded like we were saying that they hadn't been, they didn't circumcise. But what Ilya, you were telling me that until after Yosef passed away, after Yosef passed away, a lot of Jews were trying to fit in with the with, with the Mitzrayim, mm. and because of that, they stopped circumcising themselves. It's very similar to what happened in Europe right before the Holocaust. A lot of Jews, unfortunately, were becoming very assimilated and they were trying to imitate non-Jews and mm. they were stopping right. from getting circumcised. Right. So, so, so what happened? And then that night, the night of the plague of the firstborn, they all... They had to make sure that every single Jew is circumcised. Right. Okay. Because as the Torah states, if you're not circumcised, you're not part of the nation. That is your union with God. On the eighth well, day, that's like that's the like the that's like the... the that's the testimony that you are. Part right. Of. right, right, yeah. So uh, we also learned from um, Moshe Rabbeinu's uh, wife, when she came to meet him, she had to circumcise one of her children because the Malach would have killed her child. Right, and that was, and that was, that, no, it would have killed Moshe. The reason was, so then it was actually, Moshe technically had a good reason because they were traveling and it's dangerous to travel, when, mm -hmm. but still he should have, you know, trusted in God. Right. Um, and so then, circumcision was very, very important. It had to be done. Right, right. Before I mean, it's, they it's leave said, Well, I was actually at a bris meal today of a friend. What's his full name? We got a new Jew in the world. Come on. He joined. Oh, the, what's the bait? What's yeah. The bait 
Shmuel. You gotta announce the name. We got a new Jew in the world. Shmuel Yosef, I think. I think okay. Welcome to the world, Shmuel Yosef. <laughs> okay. Shout out. I, don't, I, wonder if the, I wonder if his father's going to see this. Be like, I'm blasting my kid's name on social media. <laughs> we didn't say anything bad. No, I'm just kidding. So, oh, and then another thing that I, I said, which was incorrect, um, and then I looked up. Um, f- fun fact, actually, I was in Connecticut this Shabbos, and I'm in a show, and I see this book that says, um, it's, I think it's called uh, Jewish Folklore. Okay. Like a lot of, you know, like kind of jokes and, and mixed with some, you know, true... I, I guess it's stories that maybe you can't um, definitely... No, you can't... You, you don't... They don't have like... They're not 100% verified, but there's like, you know, hearsay. So it mentions a lot of people. So I opened the book. I was interested and I see a cutout mm-hmm. for like, you know, how people hide things in books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that building used to be a shiva. So somebody was probably like hiding their like iPod or their hard drive or something in the book. I opened it to like half of the book, half of the pages are ruined because there's a huge cutout. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it was a disguised book. <laughs> yeah, but, but half of the book was still intact. I was able to read it. So it mentions... So how about this? It mentions Moses Montefiore, or okay. Montefiore, I don't, I don't know how you uh-huh. pronounce it. Um, but, so, and I realized that I, I had mentioned he, he from, from the Sefer, I thought he was another rabbi he was talking about. He wasn't really a rabbi, he was a very influential Jew mm-hmm. who lived in London. He was from Italian descent. Um, I wrote down a little bit about him over here. Um, he lived from, I think, 17... 17- 44 to 1845 or so in the 1700s and 1800s he lived mm-hmm. um, and he was extremely influential in England he had a lot to do with the stock exchange he was a very rich man and he actually was his brother-in-law was a Rothschild um, okay yeah and he he wasn't so really just growing up he, he visited Eretz Yisrael mm-hmm. and when he went there he actually helped helped a lot of the Jews in Eretz Yisrael out a lot he he gave them money. He supported them, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, historically Jews living in Israel were always uh, not so well to do. They were always poor. Yeah. They gave their, you know, they, they sacrificed a lot in their life just to live in the Holy Land. And he helped them out. When he visited there, it had a very big impact on my life. I think he, he either he writes or it's written about him that that was an event that changed his life drastically. Mm-hmm. From then on, he became more religious, so much so <clears throat> that he yeah. traveled with a personal shochet personal slaughter or someone. Wow. Yeah, because you can't get, you know, he would travel a lot. You can't get kosher meat. can't mm-hmm. rely on everybody. So he would actually travel with someone who's always with him. You paid him in order to uh, make sure he had kosher meat. He became that observant. Yeah, yeah. He, he, wow. You know, he okay. became... Um, Plus, at that time, don't forget, traveling of any sort was very, very extensive and very expensive. Yeah, you couldn't transport meat then. Back That's what I'm you, saying. Yeah, you, yeah. It was very expensive. Yeah, so but he having an to... extra person travel with you is even more expensive and yeah. more of a liability. Yeah, so you know, it's like the, you know, like the modern day, like there's some really rich people who they want to go away, but they don't have a minion. They literally bring 10 people with mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. You know? I think that's amazing. You know? And those guys are having a blast. <laughs> Because he doesn't want to be bothered by them. He just wants a minion. So they show up for the minion and then, you know, take my credit card. <laughs> I have an uncle that lives in Russia. Yeah. Okay. He's so wealthy. Every time he travels anywhere, even if he meets his friends or family anywhere, he always travels with an entourage of, of security. Mm. And the security have a hotel stay. They have a tra- all the traveling yeah, expenses. Yeah, be covered. Are paid for. Yeah. Everything's paid for. Yeah, for sure. Oh, very interesting. He and... Rothschild had some, they, they, I think they had to do with a lot of uh, institutions that were in favor of slavery uh, of abolish, a, abolition. Okay. He, the, you know, he, he was very in favor of ending slavery. And um, actually, interesting fact, he's on the one shekel, uh, on, on the old, one of the old bills, on the old, not the shekel, the old shekel bill, his uh-huh. face is actually on the... Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll, uh, if I have the time, I'll put it on the screen. Paper money or Paper, it was coin. paper. Oh, no, it was paper money. Paper. Now you don't have paper shekels. Right, right, right. It was, uh, it was not the shekel chadash. And there's actually a funny story. It's either said about him or something similar said about somebody else. I forgot the name. But there's some guy who was saying, he was sitting with an anti-Semite. He was known to be very smart. And he was sitting, he was, happened to, found himself, I guess, some kind of meeting or whatever it was with the anti-Semite next to him. He goes, yeah, you know, in Japan, they don't have... Uh, they have neither pigs nor Jews. 
That was a very, you know, insulting remark. So without missing a beat, he goes, uh, we should both go there. That, that way they'll have a sample of both. <laughs> <laughs> clever. Very yeah, clever. Yeah, so anyway, that's a little bit about Moses Montefiore. So we turned the mistake into some, <coughs> some Jewish geography. Anyway. Um, so, back to this week's Parsha. Yes. This now that Parsha. we cleared up everything in the past. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> This week's Parsha. What I learned from this week's Parsha is... Uh, First what of all, what's the name of this week's Parsha? Uh, just read it. B'Shalach. Yes. Um, it's, it's, he's coming off a cold, guys. Don't, don't hold uh, it against yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, When a person sees Hashem does something for him, like a miracle, something that, that happened, uh, that Hashem went out of his way to do for him, Every time he goes back to that location, he's supposed to sit there and pray and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, and, and remember what Hashem has done, the miracle that was done for him. Yeah, yeah. Baruch Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. And the reason why it said that, because every time you remember and thank Hashem for what He has done for you, that means He will keep on sending you miracles. Right, right. It's the ungrateful that don't get any repeats. Right. I mean, it may, it may, I mean, we understand that as people, right? You do something good for someone and they never say thank you. You just take, take, take. You get tired of giving. Mm -hmm. um, All is, Hashem really wants from us is our gratitude. Well, well, and if you look at it, I mean, even, even when we don't get gratitude, He still gives us health and, you know, all these things, you know. Because He's our Father. At the end of the day, your, your parent is never going to leave you to die. He's always going to provide the bare minimum. It's up to you how much more you, you, you want to get. Right. It's right. up to you to strive for more and be grateful. And of course, he'll give. He's a giver. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting to see the, the, you know, we talk about the relationship between Hashem and, and, and us. You know, the, 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 for, you know, there's a question, why is it that in Israel we need, always need rain? But in Egypt, there was the, the Nile River that would, you know, make mm -hmm. everything grow and so the 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 mushal the example is like a you know father who loves his child the child he really really loves he always wants to he, check up on him yeah oh. he says he wants him to come back for more mm -hmm. more money for more things that he needs if, if, if he doesn't want to be bothered he says okay take you know this crazy amount of money take everything you need and you know bye bye so he wants our prayers he wants us to be, be you know always have a relationship with him so that's why he we don't have something that just gives us without any, any relationship with him. That's a good one. I heard something similar, but a little slightly different. Hopefully you could erase it afterwards if it's not so appropriate. But the comparison was like Ooh. this. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a reason why Hashem made a snake the way the snake is. He uh -huh. says a snake has to feed once every two weeks or a week or so. Yeah. And there's always abundance of food for a snake. A snake will never be hungry. Mm. Why? So it never turns to Hashem for anything. He says, you are cursed, so therefore you're forever going to have food. You're forever going to have everything you need. You're not going to taste anything. Everything is going to be tasteless. Mm. And you're never going to um, ask for my help. I don't want you coming to me, approaching me for anything. I don't want a relationship with you. Exactly. So get away from me. Mm. Here, have enough, just get away. And also, the Nile River, a river you said, they compare it this, the same way to a snake. The Nile River goes like a snake. Mm. So it's a snake that was placed there that is forever fed because he doesn't want anything to do with them. He doesn't want to hear from right. them. Right. Man, we could, we could leave that in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ancient Egypt is gone. We're not offending anybody. Yeah. <laughs> anybody living. You hear me, Pharaoh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, Pharaoh did Shua afterwards, it yeah, says. Yeah, Pharaoh, he, well, it's, uh, he survived somehow and went to Ninveh. I, 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 there's, yeah, there's a measure that says that the, the, the king of Ninveh was Paro and he did Shua, yeah. We mentioned that, I think, last But time. why? The question is, why Ninveh? Why not stay Pharaoh and change his whole nation if he did Shua? Stay for what? Everything was... What are you talking about? The entire country was obliterated. Okay, I'm talking about... But it's still Egypt. It still has, you know no, what I mean? I think, I think, what, his whole, he was a god. He was a god. He was a god to them. He's nothing now. He's, he's reduced to absolutely nothing. 
I'm talking about after. I'm talking about... No, what does he got? Okay, how many generations later did Cleopatra and Marco Polo and all of that happen? I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Honestly, I don't know. I, so I, what I'm trying to say is that Egypt came to its glory at some point. Yeah. After I mean, all that, for right? For sure, for sure. So if he would have just stayed in Egypt and rebuilt there and changed his whole nation and, and make his nation do tshuva, I think all the whole world would have been different now. First of all, I don't know what the answer is. Second of all, I, if, if you were asking me, I would just say he's... No, but is, I'm just curious. I'm not no, I think, I think he, he lost his status as a god. He's, he will never be perceived the same way. He has nothing left for him. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that, about the status of, of, of him claiming he was a god. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, okay, so we start off with the Jews going out of Tzrayim, mm -hmm. right? And, Yos uh, and uh, Moshe takes out the bones of Yosef. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what were the rest of the Jews doing? And the answer is that they were, you know, they were... Getting rich. Yeah, but, but it wasn't... Fulfilling the promise of Hashem. Right, but it wasn't, it wasn't just that. It was also that Moshe had to do it because otherwise they, would, they wouldn't know who to give the honor to. Everyone would want to be involved. So they said that Yosef, who is so important, the most important of all of us, should be the one to, to be in charge. Mm -hmm. um, and now the, there's a question that comes... We know that tzaddikim, their bodies don't rot. Mm -hmm. Right, because they're tzaddik, their bodies stay intact. And there are stories of, you know, unfor you know f unfortunately, they had to move the body mm -hmm. of a tzaddik. And they found that even when it was very wet areas where there, the body gets, um, rots even faster, the body was intact. Um, I, I, my father, I remember my father telling me a story. I forgot what the name of, of, of this particular tzaddik was. But the, the point is that, so how, did, how, how is it that Yosef's bones were taken out? So... It says that the Nile, he wasn't buried. I get what you're saying. The, the deterioration process should never happen. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a miracle mm -hmm. that a, that a, that, a, that a tzaddik, after they they pass away, the body is intact. But the question is, why was that not the case with Yosef? And and the question is even more because they they probably mummified him. He was a king in Egypt, mm -hmm. or second to the king. So uh, the answer is, it says actually that Yosef prayed that his body should rot as a atonement as a kapara for sins that he sins whatever that means for things that he did as a king because because he was second to the king and he had so much power he was obviously put in a position where he probably had to do things that he wouldn't have done if he w weren't so in the miyam noise it just says that he, he he did sins what i imagine is that you know we know yosef, yosef atadik even in egypt stayed clean stayed pure but whatever it was yosef felt that in his position he did things that he regretted and, and he had to do them because of his position. And as an atonement, he didn't want to stay with any sin, so that would be an atonement. It's not just regret. Uh, when you hold such a high political position, mm -hmm. you make decisions right. based on the majority of your nation. Mm. So when you make a decision based on the majority, there's always a minority that's going to suffer. So, so therefore, maybe, yeah. this minority can't come after you. Our presidents, our uh, constitution, United mm. States Constitution, has the same... A thing going on. It says that when, while you are president, if you made decisions based on what was needed at that time, after you're president, you can't be prosecuted for any of those decisions because you made those decisions as a leader, not as a you know uh, as right. a personal person. So as long as it wasn't corrupt, as long right? As so you made those decisions based on the major, uh, the needs of the majority, not the minority. Right. Yeah, that's how, yeah, it's, that's so what... There's always going to be a minority of people that are going to hate you for it. But it doesn't mean yeah. that the whole, as a whole we didn't benefit from it. Yeah, 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 you got to make tough choices, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, oh, oh, I wanted to mention something. It says actually that, that the Jews leaving Mitzrayim, uh, it says a few interesting things about it. Number one, um, they, they left... Uh, armed, they left armed because even though they saw so many miracles from Hashem, you're not supposed to uh, rely on miracles, mm -hmm. and therefore they left, you know, making sure that they had, they were able to to defend themselves. Um, and they were, and actually was. It says that until Moshe took out the bones of Yosef, 
they were afraid that maybe they were leaving Egypt too soon. And so also that, for that also, they, they made sure that they were um, uh, defending themselves because 30 years earlier, mm-hmm. some of the Shevet Ephraim, I don't know if it was the whole Shevet Ephraim or some mm-hmm, of them, mm-hmm. they left early, they've managed to escape. And they perished in the, the desert. And the Plishtim, the Plishtim went, came and killed them and their bones were left in the, in the desert. Mm-hmm. They didn't even <sighs> bury them. The, yeah, they did, yeah, exactly. They didn't bury them. And that's also, it says, one of the reasons why Hashem didn't want to take them. Derech Eretz Plishtim. He, right, it says, right, Hashem, right, right. They went the long way. Um, why? Because he didn't want them to see, to see their brother's bones just piled. You know, mm-hmm. Even though they heard about it, it's not the same when you hear about something and when you actually see it. So he didn't want, they didn't want them to run back to Egypt out of fright, you know, you know, out of fear from, from the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but once, once Moshe Rabbeinu took out the bones of Yosef, that was like a sign that now is the time that, that, that we need to go. But um, something about, you know, not relying on a miracle, Shlomo HaMelech says in Mishle that uh, Sus... What does it say? Sus muchan leyeh mochama v'lashem atshua. That the horse is ready for the day of, of war, but Hashem is the one who gives salvation. Meaning we have to do our part. You can't rely on a miracle. Mm-hmm. And if you do everything that you can, if you need a miracle, God will send the miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's in general the idea of, you know, why every single day we, we don't just sit back and say, oh, Mashiach is coming, so therefore, you know, everything's going to come to us. No, we have to prepare. Of course. Every we single day. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, something very, something interesting also about the Pelishtim, uh, it's not the something interesting about why Hashem took us the long way and not through the way of the Pelishtim, because if they would have gone the other way, there, there, were, two, there were two um, bodies of water. Mm-hmm. Now, if we would have gone the other way, Mitzrayim wouldn't have ran after us because that body of water was much closer. Mm-hmm. So in order to give them the punishment they deserved of water, because they hurt the Jews with water, mm-hmm. We had to go a further ro- route in order mm-hmm. to say, oh, they're running away, so they would chase after us. They would have never ventured into the water after us if we would have gone the other way. Mm-hmm. So we went, the, Hashem took us the longer way, so they should, they should get what they deserve, you know, get their punishment mm-hmm. um, with water. But uh, then we stayed on that beach for the next couple of days, and we were collecting all the jewels and all, all, all the, what's yeah. his name, um, all, um, swords and all, everything that, that was washing up yeah. from all the Egyptians. For the next couple of days. Yeah. As the Moshe Rabbeinu said, hey guys, enough, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I um, don't understand why we had to stay in that uh, beach. I mean, think about it. When we had the, uh, uh, the one, um, the plague, not the last one, but the one before last one. Yeah. The uh, darkness. Darkness already made us filthy with, uh, rich. As a matter of fact, don't even go to the darkness. The very first one made us rich when all the water turned into blood. Imagine if you worked for an employer that didn't pay you for all of your life. All of your life he didn't pay yeah. you because you're his slave. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know what? Today you have to pay me everything you owe me for the past 30 years. You're becoming filthy rich whether you like it or not. I'm a millionaire. Exactly. Yeah. That's first of all. Not only that, a couple of weeks later, you have darkness. I'm becoming even more rich. Whatever you were hiding from me, guess what? Now everything you ever owned is mine. Well, yeah, so they got more rich and more rich and more rich. I mean, How much more rich can you get? You understand what I'm saying? How much more can you get? After darkness, what is left? <laughs> I don't know. You understand what I mean? Yeah, they got... After darkness, what is left? You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, So if we already took all the gold of the land, what more is there? I don't know. There was more gold. I don't know. <laughs> you could always be more rich, right? I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's interesting, though. Um, and after all of that, they say that Korach is the richest one? Well, because Korach, yeah. Because Korach found a, a treasure bigger than everybody but else. But if everybody around you is super rich, your wealth is, doesn't mean anything anymore, no? You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. I, what, what, what am I going to tell you? I mean, listen, you know what? Eventually, it ended up being for the Mishkan. They had animals for Karbanos, all those different I things. I get it, but how is it that Korah had so many donkeys carrying just the keys to all these um, treasure chests? What about all the, everybody else? 
Wow. They also walked out with so much gold and Yeah, but so Korach and... was the richest of them all. And then we said earlier, when we said at the end of the day, everything he got was from Avodah Zarah, and it all went to the ground with him. That, that's true. So, yeah, you yeah. know, here are some crazy things right here. Um, there are some opinions that say that the bones of Yosef were put inside of the skin of, of either a sheep or a, or a goat, and that it, there was life infused into it, and it walked by itself. Really? Yeah, it's, it's insane. And that's why it says in Tehillim, it says, Noheg Katzon Yosef, that um, Yosef was led like a sheep. So it says, according to that, it, it, that fits perfectly with what this is saying, that, it, that the sheep was kept alive for 40 years, and it just walked with them in the midbar. And that's how Yosef's bones were brought to Eretz Yisrael. Wow. And according to that, it makes sense how Moshe Rabbeinu was able to be the Kohen Gadol before his brother Aaron, because for the seven days before they put, her, put up the Mishkan, Moshe did all the Avodah. Right, right, right. How could he do it if he's Tameh? Right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According right. to this... Right, right. He couldn't have touched the bones. Yeah. But we also learned that the bones were levitating, so that he didn't really need to touch them. Right, so again, there's a lot of ways to answer this, but this is one uh -huh. of the ways to answer okay, how Moshe yeah, Rabbeinu did it. That makes sense, yeah. I didn't um, actually think about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of different, you know... There's also the, the people who, it says they were carrying the bones. Because first of all, they, they brought up all the, the, the bones of all the Shvatim. Right. Right? There was the opinion that says that everybody took the bones of their forefathers uh, from Mitzrayim and, and left Mitzrayim. Right. But, and we know that by the Karban Pesach, there were people who they weren't able to do the Karban Pesach. Mm -hmm. Right? They weren't because they were Tame, and that's why Pesach Sheni was made specifically for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is an incredible lesson that we'll, we'll learn later on. Mm -hmm. That, you know, when a person says, I want to do a mitzvah, Hashem made a whole new Yom Tov just for those people, you know? Um, now, and then, and then something that says that actually Moshe Rabbeinu, this is the Hadar Zakenim who writes this, that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote one of the holy names, the Shem Mafarash, on the the skin of this either sheep or, 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 or I think Hadar Eskenim said it, it says it was a goat and that it came to life and it carried the it, incredible incredible imagine like this like it's like hollow animal moving you know it's so funny uh, also like kind of wow. kind of creepy but yeah it is kind of creepy but at the same time I mean what has to be done has to be done now that it talks about taking care of you know burial it, it brought down in, in the other Sefer I learned from the Sefer uh, uh, Ploy Satera. It says that in a certain notebook, they found like a, like a diary of the Hever Kadisha, the people who dealt with the burial in Prague. Um, and it says over there a story that when the Kliyakar passed away, we mentioned the Kliyakar before, he has an mm -hmm. incredible story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they sent a question to the Shalah uh, if, if who, who should be the ones to deal with purifying the body and getting him ready for burial. Should it be his students? Because mm -hmm. those are the most important people to him. Closest and, you know, to him, uh -huh. or, like or, his children. Or, right, or should it be the Chavar Kadisha, the, the ones in the town who always do it, who, who gets the merit. And the Shalah said that because they have this um, job and they have t that mitzvah is theirs, you can't take it away from them. If they want, they can give up that honor to the Talmud, but they have the right to hold on to it because it's their mitzvah and they, and they took out of their time, right? Anytime someone needs to be buried, they, take, they stop whatever they're doing, they stop whatever job they might be doing and they go and they take care of it. So someone who does that for their whole life, they can't be told now, oh no, you don't get to do that mitzvah when it comes to such a holy person because mm -hmm. they sacrifice so much to bury to Jewish that, people. Right. Yeah. Since we're on the subject, yeah. That means I cannot uh, clean to bury my own father, or can I? What does the Allah say about that? Is the son allowed to uh, wash and, and, and uh, what's his name, clean and uh, the question prepare that, his, okay. his parents? I don't know. Well, mother, of course not. But what about the father? So you're, the, not suppo you're not allowed to see the naked, na well, the father, neither, neither is a father. But. Right, so, so again, so that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't... The only thing that, it's a matter of respect. That's the only thing that comes up when I'm saying you're, like, you're not supposed to see your father unclothed. 
So therefore, maybe. I mean, yeah, but does that only pertain to uh, pertains to it when he's alive? Right, or, that's a good question. I don't because know because you're not doing it be to suspect them. You're doing it. Uh, the opposite is the contrary. To, to respect, you're 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 showing respect. You want to yeah. do it yourself and not leave that to someone else. That's very interesting. I don't and know. also, if the students are considered his children, then why are they allowed to see him naked? If what? If the students are c considered technically his children, why are they con uh, allowed to see him naked? So maybe, oh, that's a good question. You, you understand what I mean? So, uh, I, one second. I, we got to find out the halakha yeah. about that. We're going to, God willing, Hashem, we're going to come back with the answer to this halakhic question. Right As now, you guys can see, we, we, we are not very, very knowledgeable about a lot of these things, but uh, we try our best. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's a learning experience. We're, yes. le we're learning together with you guys. But, um, Comment below if you think you know the answer or what you think about that. <laughs> do it. Yeah, please do. It will make our <laughs> lives a little easier. <laughs> yeah. Um, now Moshe, it's, oh, now here's something very interesting I never heard before. It says that Moshe took Basia's bones to bury in Eretz Yisrael out of Hakar Satov because she raised him, she saved his life, and so he took her as well with him. She goes into Gan Eden without death. What are you talking about? That's what it says. She goes into... Go I've clearly read it many, many times. Are you thinking about Basia or Sarah? His adopted mother. The one that saved him from the, from, from, from the water. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll She's one of the ten that goes into Gan Eden without death. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. So either there's a conflict in, in, in what happened, or you're thinking of someone else. But I don't know. We'll have to look into that as well. Wow, look. We have so many questions this week. Okay. <laughs> So many, okay, so we have our homework cut out for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now here is something very interesting. It says that the, so when the Yidin went out, right, uh, of Mitzrayim, they had the, the Anani HaKavod, the, the clouds, right, the clouds of glory mm -hmm. and the, the pillar of fire mm -hmm. at night. And... It says it's like a mushal, like a king who was with his sons all day, right, in the throne room. And then when they leave, he takes a torch and he leads the way. Mm -hmm. And his servants come and say, we would like to do the honors. The king says, it's not because I don't have servants that I, like, like the noblemen, noblemen want the honor. And, he, and, and the king says, it's, it's not because I lack servants that I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I want to honor my children, because mm -hmm. I love them. So same thing here. It says Hashem himself led them, right, with with that and I covet and the fire so that everyone should know that he loves his children and that he's, he's, he's protecting them and so that they should fear and respect them. Mm -hmm. um, now the question arises, <clears throat> if they were walking day and night, <laughs> it means that they were working harder than they were in Egypt because they didn't get a break. Okay. But Imagine walking is, in a desert. But and then, this, this is their great escape. What do you mean? So the answer, it's not about that. It's the great escape. It's right. the, the, the leaving. Well, you know? it also becomes a question of just like how is it physically possible to go for so long without sleeping. Mm -hmm. So what it says is that the clouds actually, they had a cloud. We know this. It was a cloud on top, a cloud on bottom. It actually moved them. It was like they were on flattened a ship. Flattened everything. Uh -huh. It flattened the ground. But it was like a moving on a ship. So you could be on a ship and you, the traveling doesn't bother you at all. Same thing here. It just moved them. So they weren't, it wasn't that they were trudging all day and night. Um, it's like you go to some of these hotels or some of these uh, airports. You take your luggage and you see it's like an escalator, but it's <laughs> flat. It just, just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you stand on it, you're looking around, and it just keeps going, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then you get off and you're like, oh, I have to walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity again. I got to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, yeah, that is... I'm going to have to uh, include something from... The Rebbe, especially because today is Yitzhva, at the time of filming, when you're watching this, it will probably be the day after. I am very but, proud to say that this is the year, this year, I acquired the Rebbe's dollar, and I acquired his nickel. Oh, really? When did you get the nickel? Oh, at the same time. Oh, you got the nickel. I told okay. you I got it both at the same time. So you can frame it. Ah, I, sh I should show I have. You know I have cufflinks with dimes. No way. Yeah. So you didn't bring, you didn't have them on today? On a day like this? This is not a cuffling shirt. A cuffling shirt is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Shabbos shirt. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so there's so much more to the Parsha. I mean, the, the, 
the just the going we only scratched the the surface yeah just going just yeah a tiny bit like already them traveling to the front of of the of the ocean, of the Yamsuf, right the whole story of nachshon nachshon jumping into the water which is an incredible lesson mm -hmm. of of how you have to do your part until you can't do anything more and then hashem will if you do everything that you can hashem will do the rest for you nachshon went up until his nose and then that's when the sea parted right he just jumped in first and that's that's a huge lesson for us um and the miracles that they saw in in the yamsuf um but there's an opinion that also says that until the bones of Yosef touched the, the water, the, 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 uh, the water didn't split. The sea didn't split. I so it was, they were waiting for the bones of Yosef because the sea, when the sea split, it did it for the zuhud of Yosef. Mm. Because he broke his nature in Egypt when all these women wanted him so badly. A 17-year-old boy, you know. He was a pretty boy. Full of, right, full of <laughs> hormones. And they're all hitting on him hard body, you know? <laughs> and he's able yeah, to you're withstand. Killing me, man. <laughs> but, but, but that's what it was. Yeah. But he was able to withstand it. He broke his nature. Yeah. So therefore, the sea owed it to him that's to break its nature for him. But so the question is how to reconcile. We, we know everyone knows that Nachshon, right? That's I mean, the story of Nachshon is, is of course, undisputed. Yes. But I guess you could say for the for for the merit of Yosef it opened mm -hmm. up. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, then the miracles that, that we saw in, in, the, in the sea, the, the, the different types of punishments that were given on the sea and, and, and which, you know, there were some people who were more deserving of punishment and they were thrown around like, hey, the ones who were less deserving went down right away like lead. Um, I mean... The, the, Everybody the, got what they deserved. The great, yeah, and, and I mean, the main thing for us is, I mean, you, you know, we don't, we don't wish death and destruction upon anybody this ne needed to happen but what we what we saw there were the biggest revelations of godliness happened there where, where even the, the maidservant said Zekeli on Veu right they saw this is God this is my God the uh, kids were saying all the kids that yeah. were growing up were saying this is my God right because as they were supposed to be killed they were left in the field and mm. who took care of all the babies ah so they said that this is the same one that yeah, took care of me they said yeah, oh I I, we sm they smelled the orchards they smell and they, they saw these angels that would come and feed them and all. And they said, oh, this is God. Because they remembered how they were saved when we were, they were babies. Wow, wow. I remember hearing that. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I, for, I forgot about that. That's an incredible. So for them, they were convinced this is it. This is our Savior. Right. They didn't need any other convincing. Wow. Yeah, I, I, would, just, I would encourage everybody to, to, to go and look into the parsha on your own. I'm sorry I couldn't bring more stuff because this is just the beginning scratching the surface. You know what, if we do, we're going to do this long enough, we'll do it next year, we'll start off from where, you know, we'll, we'll recommend to do last, we'll watch last year's video and then we'll add onto it so we, we can cover the whole Parsha. Um, but this is what we got and... Um, Hopefully you find this informative and... Entertaining. <laughs> Thank you very much guys for your time. Uh, smash that like button, it's free. Don't forget to recommend. Anything else you want to add? Shabbos. <laughs> Good Shabbos, that's right. It is Wednesday. <laughs> Good Shabbos. <laughs>